<laughs> okay, my lovelies. Let's tell you what's going through my brain. Craziness, of course. Besides that, this this tilted planter box that's almost butting the one in front of it and it appears that it actually bumped it at one point and rotated <laughs> decline and rotated and bumped it at one time and we look over there by the dog look over there by the dog and the fireman that's that little block sausage in their line to the that 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 right there bottom right going up to so right bottom right going up there that's a block wall on the floor ground there is the column right there in front of us that's the column those are the rabbit ears so then we move over we move over come on move over so right there is the column all right there's column one and there's with the pointing and then column two is right there that's that one Hmm, it's right above it. These are as built, if you will, because this is the engineer that was going to work on these plans. So we're going to call these the as built. So when it when it went down, when the deck went down, it's sort it's they're about center line, but it didn't just go down. It pushed all the way over to the front of the corner of that box and pushed it. I'm zooming out and going back over. See? It leaned over when it butterfly there. That's our reaction. But that one also, I get that reaction too. They both would meet in, if in a line coming this direction. That one, you know, there again. So it punched up. It it threw the wall at this speed that it punched up at. It threw that top layer of brick off, block off. It threw it off to the right. There it is there again. So it such it didn't just punch it slowly. It lifted up. It probably stayed with it at such speed. Or it's got a story to tell. That's why I'm sharing it with you. The butterfly. Now, this is what it looks like if we look use it in drawing. That pink one there, this one there, that's the light pole. So it went down in that direction also, that direction. So it's giving me a direction of, uh, of its impact, of, the, of, of its initial source. And that's about where that, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you know, you're, you're hitting the front of the box. Hmm. I come over here, and we start breaking down the scratches. Okay, so we got scratches on this face of it. The scratched on the north face, south, southwest fractured, fractured steel. The southwest corner of this column there, I think it's 42, is uh, fractured. Interesting, this fracture deal in a minute moment. This I'm talking about. Neither those are scratched. Pretty much not scratched. And this one is uh, dropped and connected to deck. All right, so it dropped and it connected to deck. It's got a drape coming off from, as you look at that, north is at the top of the screen, south is at the bottom, west is to the left. So on the west side, it went down. Of course, if those are the three, then you know where east is. And those three did not fail. So of course, we got our KLM, which is up there, which we've already now seen that We've already found K and L intact, so we found we found that one intact. The guy standing on it. I, this one's obviously there. We can find that one. This one was the blue headed blue head, and this is the other one. Interesting those head heights. Very interesting on the head heights. Another another conversation for the head heights. These two, this one and that one, I'll show you in another another video. Uh, another video. All right, let's go over. Oops. Well, that didn't. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know I can do that. Huh. I can switch off. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Oh, that's my uh, photography. Uh, that's a foot. Oh, that's a photography uh, light. 
Um, okay, so how do I go back? Uh, oh, wait a minute. So it's recording screen? That's weird. That's weird because it's recording screen. What are you guys looking at now? I wonder because right now I'm seeing I'm in the camera mode. Ah, well, let me just go ahead and bail on this and show you what the hell I'm looking at. Let's go back to there. Okay. Yeah, let's go to here. So, um, what you're looking at here is the rebar, the NIST image. It's interesting. The top of it appears to have some type of deformation in it, but I think that's, I think it's an overlap. But out of all that rebar, I've been looking for stamp. A stamp, it tells me the the uh, the rating of it. And also maybe where it's made. Oh. Okay, well that's weird. That's the, uh, that's this site. Okay, there we go. So there's a, that's what concrete, this concrete looks like. But the, uh, the rebar has no labeling on it that I can find. But that's a, um, um, a brittle fracture. Interesting, the rebar where, where it comes across like that. It's almost like it was spring-loaded, but then you got to remember that they moved this. And so at one point it was somewhere else, possibly the bottom right of the screen. And they moved it with the excavators and things like that. And then you get this bent rebar that you can't get real information off of. But that is a brittle fracture. See the uh, materials inside there, how it looks like that? It's not a cut. It's not a saw cut, and it's not a machine cut. That's a brittle fracture. Um, machine cuts have a compressive moment to them. They, 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 they bend rebar. Interesting, though, this does have the rib that typically uh, you make the, uh, the better rebar has. Um, that's what it looks like today. Thanks a lot for sharing, somebody. Um, that's the rubble. The rubble in the pile, the rubble in the pile. Um, but that's the one I wanted to show you. That one, and there's one more. Here is um, a lot of rusted metal. Unidentified, so I guess they yet to identify, but nevertheless, it's just clumped together, thrown over here. It has a story to tell of what, you know, of a, two, a pile of fucking debris. Look at it. See this pile there without the steel in it? This is like they're just ready to recycle. Um, yeah. Look at that. Amazing, right? Amazing. Just a pile of debris. A pile, a pile of debris. Just throw that shit away. Miami-Dade police officers and or other municipal police departments and or Miami-Dade County personnel are authorized, represented or authorized, or Miami-Dade personnel are authorized, are, are authorized representatives to advise any person to leave these premises. Failure to vacate these premises after being instructed may result in arrest for trespassing after warning. Oh, so first they tell you to leave. So you guys around there, looks like uh, their warning sign is kind of like at first you get a verbal Customers only, uh, call it, kiss the fire. All right, um, this is what I want to get to. Look at that rebar there. I don't see any stamps on it, but I see a lot of rust and a little bit of paste. A little bit of paste right there, a little white paste, and the rest is just clear rust. So uh, I don't know where this was, but I'll tell you what, it didn't have any rebar, it didn't have any concrete engagement on it. It lost it a long time ago. It was rust jacking, possibly, because uh, that's an amazing amount of rust with no paste. It's no paste. And that's the big stuff. That's not the little stuff. So, um, yeah. No wonder the building came apart so easily. Um, yeah, that's the col a column-type detail with the stirrups on it right there in the middle. The three stirrups all clustered together. And you got paste there, but as you step up to that, going above it, I mean, it's just rebar central. Just rusting, you know, good good metal, stable, pretty much stable for 40 years, and it's got good profile on it. Um, I'm going to do some rebar pullout tests for you guys. I'm going to put some rebar in some concrete. I'm going to show you what I do. 
and I'll put some with concrete as a grout and we'll let it set up. We'll use some rapid set product. We'll use an epoxy product and I'll start pulling some rebound bar out of some concrete and I'll discuss to you, discuss, I'll discuss. I'll discuss with you about, you know, what's really working there. What's, how's it really biting and grabbing. Interesting when you do that, um, you're making, when you drill, you're making a smooth surface and then you're want this great pullout strength, but yet a drill makes the, a, a smooth, more smooth wall surface. So that's kind of a, a catch 22 on, on what you want. You want one to resist, but yet you just drill the hole, which makes smooth walls. So it's kind of weird to do that. Mm. Um, so I have a I have a weird um, thing about instead of and it's, nobody nobody it's not anywhere but instead of drilling straight in, which pox, which uh which is machines are actually do that they drill straight in. The coring machines will have you know four and six bits drill at the same time. I think they should drill in on an angle, and that way the pullout will be on an angle also and now you got to bend your metal a little bit slight bit but i find out that that creates a larger pullout strength on an angle than if you just go straight one in one in so i don't know if you guys know about that any engineers out there but instead of just saying dial it in now you need to rebar pull out test machine which i have to, to prove this and i'll do videos to show it that you know like you know just you know 15 degrees is a big difference between running straight in based on the pulling action, you know, your, your reaction of how you want the, uh, of your pullout test. Your pullout test will, will just go up. It will go up. You think it would uh, fracture more? No, I'm not saying much. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying bend your bar more than that. I'm saying bend it just slightly to get you back in alignment um, if, you, that's what, if that's what you desire. But I have to get in alignment to do my pullout test. Or I use an angle, or I have to set up an angled uh, clamp to do the tilt pull out test, in which case then it's just a straight one to one. So it's not the same, is it? You get a little fracture at the top initially, but your pull out gets, is much stronger, is much more. So um, it's sort of like pulling out on a T, you know? We know T's are stronger, uh, L's, L's are stronger. So I'm just saying that little bit of degree of, of a drill on the side. Um, again, we, we got some paste at the end here, but then we have a large amount of rust, which means no paste, which means no interaction, no love with the concrete. The love was lost. The love I lost was a sweet love. The love I lost. Right, that song. Anyway, um, those are stirrups, the little guys right there, the stirrup. And some spalling took place as that came down. There's the stirrup at the top of it, that little bit of concrete over top of it, which is cool. It tells you that, you know, how it performed. Hmm, 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 hmm. Again, lots of rust, no labeling. I can find no, no, no ratings on the steel. Um, but we, I did find multiple um, um, and brittle fractures, brittle fractures. So if you start looking up uh, beach air, salt air, things like that, um, brittle fracture, there's hydrogen embrittlement, things like that. There's a bunch of ways to get there, but this deal, this was more, I, I, I'm trying to think of it more like just pre presented as like some type of uh, sleeved, shielded with concrete interlocking Lego system that lacked, that lacked, uh, um, um, looking at all this metal, this rusted metal, that lacked um, bond, that lacked bond. I mean, look at it, just lacking in paste. Again, like that's got paste in it right there on that, on that one there in the middle. But then we move over and these are like pasteless. So if I put a rebar test on that, it would just like slip right out based on, you know, it would slip right out mostly. It still had to grind some of the, the, the fines. And I'm going to show you really a little about rebar pullout tests so you can understand it. You'll be like, oh my gosh, it's so simple. Yes, it is very simple, but you need the encasement of the materials around it. Like right there, 
That's rebar with paste on it. That's rebar without paste on it. Paste without. It's a. Uh, it's it's got a heck of a story to tell. All this uh, all this rust has a heck of a story to tell. Wishing we had more details on it. Take care. I'm out of here. Trying to tell this thing, kill this thing right now. Screen recording and stop. We'll get back to this. So you learned just now nothing because it's just not recording, is it?